All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Jenny Gao. I'm a full-time artist and entrepreneur, and I've been running an anti-gentrification arts business for eight years. I am thrilled to present a proposal for the Metro Transit Public Art Project here in Dejo, land of the Ho-Chunk, also known as Madison, Wisconsin. There are many reasons why I'm passionate about this project. I lived in Madison on East Dayton Street for nine years, only a few blocks away from the Metro building, and my former studio was on Main Street, also a few blocks away. I chose my studio location based on its proximity to multiple bus stops because many of my former interns and apprentices have relied on the bus to get to work. Next slide. I would be honored to create a community landmark for the people of this city. A question that is at the foundation of my practice is how can public art be a force for public good? I believe the answer lies with whose perspectives we engage and center in the public art process. Next slide. Community interviews are integral to my process. For this project, I focus on interviews with bus riders because this public infrastructure exists to connect people with their communities. Next slide. I conducted interviews with 27 people who rely on Madison buses, 70% of them BIPOC. This is in contrast to City of Madison's most recent 2019 survey of bus riders, where 84% of those surveyed were white, despite Madison's highly diverse bus ridership. I also interviewed city employees, not all of whom can rely on the buses, despite all city employees having access to a free bus pass. Next slide. By interviewing primarily BIPOC, BIPOC bus riders, my aim is to use this project to elevate the perspectives of commuters who rely on the bus for a wide range of needs. Next slide. Via these interviews, I gained a comprehensive picture of the many ways that people rely on public transit and also what the barriers and limitations are. Here's a sampling of quotes from my interviews. I bus to run errands for my family. I bus to visit my parents who live outside the city. As a growing adult without a car, public transit means I can be independent. I can take the bus to school and work without having to rely on someone else. Next slide. The concept that emerged from these interviews is one that conveys the experience of commuting from the perspective of the bus rider. The artwork, entitled The Time is Ours, embodies the feeling that many bus riders expressed, that even people with the longest commutes feel ownership over their time spent in transit. They don't have to mind traffic, and the time is theirs to reflect, to read, and to do as they choose. For many people, access to public transit means having independence. As I go through these next slides, please note that the bright colors are painted directly on the wall, and everything that's silver is a CNC cut aluminum panel floated away from the wall surface. Next slide. My goal is for the experience of bus riders to guide the feeling of this artwork. So what is the experience of transit for Madison riders? Next slide. People shared amazing, frustrating, and frankly poetic experiences of riding the bus, like this one. You know when you ride the bus and you hear this humming, especially in the winter, when you're leaning your head on the glass. This is soothing, and this is what public transit means for me. I don't have to worry about traffic. I get to see people chatting and in transit. I really like this experience. Next slide. Many people who rely on the buses echoed this sentiment of looking out the window, of experiencing parts of the city that they've never visited, of watching how fast development happens, and of having this time to themselves while in transit. Next slide. Each section of the artwork starts with a portrait painted on aluminum of a person looking out the window. Some are traveling with gifts, perhaps to a birthday party or shower. Others have groceries, books, a work bag. What do they see while gazing out the bus window? Next slide. Through the experience of looking out the window, I want to convey the feeling of waiting and time passing. One issue that Madisonians repeatedly bring up is how long commuting by bus can take. Infrequency of buses, inconvenient stops, and transfer points all add to people's transit time. Yet even bus riders with the longest commutes, some over an hour each way, still describe the experience as time that belongs to them. Next slide. There are four sections total in the artwork. Each section delineates the passage of time, distilled to motifs that are subtle but distinct signifiers of life in Madison. Next slide. The first section shows us melting ice and the first spring crocuses. Next slide. The second section offers us sunflowers and summer cicadas. Next slide. The third section offers fluffy milkweed pods and migrating geese. Next slide. The fourth and final section shows us snow and empty space. This fourth section also starts where tree cover increases along the building. So it will be the most covered in the summer. Next slide. And most visible in winter. 
Next slide. In my interviews, people often describe the feeling of waiting and shared what, what makes them feel safe and taken care of. Many bus stops in Madison don't have shelters, and several people were adamant about the importance of bus shelters, especially in a place like Wisconsin, where it can be extremely hot and also extremely cold. To quote one writer, it's really important to have a shelter. One time while waiting, I was crying because the wind was so cold and there was no shelter at that stop. Also, one of my closest friends I met at a bus shelter. We're really close now and all because of the time we spent waiting and in transit at the shelter. Next slide. Each of the four sections of the artwork is bookended by people waiting in a bus shelter. Like the other motifs, these are cut out of aluminum, composite panels with a matte finish, which are floated slightly from the wall to provide depth in the image. Next slide. Now that we've covered the visuals, I want, to, I want us to spend some time on the often invisible labor of public art. I frequently discuss the importance of doing both the symbolic and systemic work at the same time and wish to model that through this Metro project. Next slide. Many of you who have followed my business over the years know that I run a paid apprenticeship program for emerging artists. I have hired and mentored 25 paid interns and apprentices through my business, in addition to many other contractors, and I plan to bring that experience to this project. My plan, if selected, is to partner with Operation Fresh Start, a local nonprofit that provides employment training for young people as a part of receiving their high school diplomas. Next slide. There are many benefits to this partnership such as providing a job opportunity in the arts. Lots of young people are creative, but don't know that professional opportunities exist for artists. This project would be a chance for a young person to see themselves in this field. Furthermore, many OFS students rely on the buses. So this is also a chance to model how job creators can create opportunities for people whose main mode of transportation is public transit. Here's an image of an OFS student crew installing previous public artworks throughout Madison. So there's a precedent for this partnership with the city to happen again. Next slide. In addition to hiring locally, I plan on using Madison-based vendors for the aluminum panels and all other materials. In other words, much of the money from this project will stay local. Next slide. There is also an opportunity to incorporate community events into this project. The wave patterns in the background provide a constant in time and allude to the many homes in Madison with prairie lawns and also to the surrounding lakes. I designed these shapes to be simple enough to incorporate community paint days into the process so neighbors can come help fill in solid colors and feel shared stewardship of this artwork site. Next slide. I want to take some time to talk about the strengths of the site because throughout this process, I've heard a lot of city employees half joke about this big beige wall and not wanting the Metro building to be an eyesore or blight on the neighborhood. And while their tone is lighthearted, it's seated in a real concern that this building is ugly. Next slide. Personally, I think this site is really beautiful. East Washington Avenue is a noisy, hot, six-lane highway that bisects the isthmus. There's a lot of bare, hot concrete and sidewalks with little setback from the road. Meanwhile, Madison Metro Transit System has one of the few stretches of East Wash with full-grown trees, a setback lawn, and full shade. The tree cover combined with a north-facing wall means this block stays much cooler than the surrounding area. This makes it significantly more, more pedestrian-friendly than much of East Wash. Next slide. You can see here that the artwork ends before the heaviest tree cover begins. I designed the artwork to focus on the Eastern four sections of the building because this way it will not be necessary for the city to remove any tree cover for the visibility and placement of this artwork. Next slide. You can, just, you can see just how fantastic the tree cover is at the Western end of the building, providing necessary shade to keep the city cool. Next slide. The building itself is an amazing canvas. Here's a pedestrian view of the artwork from across the street. The length and structure of this building is intrinsic to the sense of motion in the artwork. Next slide. I designed the motifs as large silhouetted shapes that are legible from multiple distances. The brushed aluminum has a matte non-reflective surface so the panels won't be distracting to drivers. Next slide. Additionally, the artwork is aligned with the core development principles of this district. The wall-based work enhances the iconic view of the capital, community engagement strengthens neighborhood identity, the art is legible for people using many means of transit, and it provides vibrant engagement for pedestrians to enjoy East Washington Avenue. Next slide. I plan to use thigh bond aluminum composite panels for the construction of the silhouettes. These panels are lightweight and will be easy to maintain. 
They will be installed slightly floated from the wall, which will leave room from the rain drains and for city engineering to remove and maneuver them for building maintenance. For anyone at home who may be interested, there's a detailed budget breakdown and supporting information in the appendix. This is publicly available as a part of my slides with this meeting's agenda. Next slide. I'll also be using exterior grade mural paint directly on the wall surface, which is durable in all weather conditions. Anti-graffiti coating will protect the work from vandalism. UV protective coating will, will prevent sun fading. The maintenance is easy and ensures the mural will last for decades to come. Next slide. All right, we're almost to the end and I want to share just a few additional opportunities for how this project can continue to be generative in the community. Next slide. In terms of accessibility, it would be possible to make smaller laser cut versions of the motifs. These could become part of a tactile information plaque for the blind and visually impaired. Next slide. I also collected some incredible interviews as a part of this design process, and they deserve attention. I would love to release a zine in conjunction with this project. Madison is in the midst of a big conversation about the future of public transit as the city grows. Now more than ever, we need community stories to inform our perspectives of what's going on with transit in Madison. Next slide. In closing, there are many reasons why I'm passionate about this project. I lived in the Tenny Laugham neighborhood for nine years. I started my business here, in Madison and had my studio in the Marquette neighborhood. My old studio and home are blocks away from the Metro facility. This is a place where I have felt deeply rooted for a long time. Next slide. It's also a place where I'm very familiar with the challenges. As the only person of color who is a finalist for this public art project, I know how difficult it is to build a successful art practice in a state like Wisconsin, where there is so little arts funding. When women of color like myself succeed, it's often in spite of the system and not because we were well supported. Next slide. But if I win this project, I believe it will be because this community supports me. The people who are willing to take the time and entrust me with their stories have shown me that. I wish to honor that trust through the delivery of this work. Next slide. I created this proposal as a model for what public art can do to elevate a community. And I look forward to the opportunity to bring these possibilities to life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenny. I'm gonna restart the timer for 10 minutes for questions and answers now. All right, thanks, Jenny. We're gonna open the floor. Um, do any commissioners have questions or comments? Mitchell. Um, yeah, thank you, Jenny. Um, wonderful presentation. Um, I just have a quick question about the um, the painting. Um, I, I believe you know your your proposal um, with the coding will last for a while, but I'm unsure as to um, the lifetime of the panels underneath. Um, is there um, any thought in, in in that you know what what happens if they want to replace those metal panels yeah i did talk that's a great question so i did talk to cindy engineering throughout this process and my understanding is is that the, it's the westernmost panels of the building they're considering re replacing which is the part of the building that i avoided painting on so i focused the design on the eastern part that's a part that uh, they're not currently planning on replacing and based on my wall assessment during my site visit it's in good shape um, and yeah and so there's nothing about the structure of the wall that would compromise the paint. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. Um, we're going to limit. Sorry, I had a question, but my hand is not going up. Oh, go ahead. Um, would you be selecting the Operation Fresh Start art interns or do they already have art interns available? Um, in this particular apprenticeship around art? Yeah, that's a great question. So that's gonna be figured out as a part of the partnership. It wouldn't just be my decision, but uh, one, it depends on which students are in the program at the time that production for this project would start. And the conversations that I've had with them are to keep an eye out for which students show an inclination for the arts. Um, there's also going to be uh, assistance needed on the installation side. So even if they're not interested in the arts, they could still get engaged via the installation of the work. Thank you, uh, Katie. Yes, hi, Jenny, thank you for the presentation. 
I wanted to ask, um, I remember when you showed your work in general, and I just didn't remember if there was a previous piece that you've done using these materials with the paint directly on the wall and the die cut and everything. Yeah, for sure. I've worked with a lot of different materials. And so some of the murals that you've seen me do are on panels, some of them are on polytab, others are uh, on another type of paneling like the Illumicore. So I have worked on this material before. Uh, and then I've also done murals painted directly on buildings. And each of the solutions I come up with is custom to the building, uh, to the building itself and what that wall substrate is. And so that's, uh, that's a part of the decision making that I made as far as determining what to do with this particular site. Um, does that answer your question? Um, well, I was just wondering if you would point to one, but no, I think that's clear. That does answer my question. Oh, sure. Yeah, so yeah. That's great. Yeah. Do we have any other questions from commissioners? Um, was there a slide on the timeline? On the timeline? No, there's the timeline not. included in the proposal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it is not a part of the main presentation. I do have an appendix now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Karen, I have a point of clarification. It looks like uh, we have Alder Ramirez Gomez uh, with a hand raised. Yes, Alders are allowed to. Okay. Yeah, thank Sorry you. about that, Alder. You can go ahead with the question. I, I love the respect on the name, but I'm actually not an Alder. I ran for office. <laughs> oh, sorry. I the opportunity to speak in favor of Jenny because as like, again. Sarah, I'm like, sorry, we're going to take public comment. Um, oh, no, after that's, that's all the... oh, your system's broken. I'm just here quick to say, like, speak, in, speak some respect on the name of Jenny Gao. Uh, I don't have time to sit and wait for a public comment, but thank you. I wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Jenny Gao. Thank you, Benji. Thank you. You have an additional five and a half minutes if anyone else has any questions. All right. Seeing none, thank you so much, Jenny. That presentation was beautiful. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to be here and also all the work that you put into your presentation today. So uh, seeing no other questions, I think we will move forward um, to the next artist. <laughs> 